you can use this rasp for uh, hand trimming your pieces, right? So it's kind of like grating cheese. So, you know, with my bowl here, it's flared out and I can take this rasp and knock down my edges, right? So I'm left with this really fine uh, trimming bits, right? So if I wanted to smooth things out, if my bowl becomes just a little too dry to trim, and you'll know the difference uh, if you start trimming your piece and it comes off in like powder, right? We don't we don't want to breathe that in either, right? And then this is all still recyclable too, so I'm just gonna toss that in my slip bucket here. So um, using this to just knock down your sides, right, and smooth things out. So trim your piece while leather hard, right? If your piece gets too dry, um, use this rasp. We have a couple of them floating around in here, right over there. And then I can smooth out the base here with using uh, my pottery rib or uh, sponge, right? It's leaving some marks behind, so. Um, I can smooth it out. So that's using a rasp if you guys need to use a rasp, right? And let's take a look at trimming <laughs> and adding that coil foot, right? So this is the bowl that uh, I threw and the bottom is pretty thin. So what I'm gonna do is trim down the sides and then add myself a coil foot, right? Has anyone made coils with clay before, right? Play-Doh or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty similar. You can do this on your table. I just have this wood board here that will um, be a little easier. So I have wedged clay. I'm gonna get my coil started and I'm gonna make it fairly long. So just starting it out in my hand here um, doesn't have to be perfect, right? We have ways to even things out, right? So I can roll my palm on the flat end to compress this together. And sometimes I get a flat edge here. Uh, it happens sometimes when I have stiff clay. So this is uh, a little on the stiff side, but you can still use it, right? pressing down and rolling across with my one hand. I tend to roll coils pretty evenly with one hand. Um, you can also roll with both, right? So if you're rolling with both, start at the center and work your way out. So I'm rolling across the board here, not too much pressure. And if I add too much pressure, I'm gonna smash my piece down. But this will be a long enough coil to do what I want to do, right? So I'll set this off to the side for now and get my bowl. making sure things are on center, right? I can line up my rim with the circles and just kind of guess and see um, how it looks. I can post up my wrist, 
and run my finger around to make sure that it's on center, right? I've been working with some of you like this, right? So I hold my finger like a tool and see where it touches. That's where I need to press in, right? So I can adjust things. It's really helpful to do that with uh, a piece that is a little off center. And then we'll make our four little lugs. And place these down on the wheel. And what I'm gonna do is just trim the sides, right? I have a flat bottom here. So I'm just going to trim my side down until it looks good, right? So if I have a real flat bottom, because if I start trimming in the center, it could uh, trim, trim through. We don't want to do that, right? So first try trimming a foot, like the inset or raised foot I showed you. And if that's not working, then let's do um, this coil foot here, right? So with scoring and slipping, um, we have our serrated rib here. It's got the teeth and my foot is gonna go right to the edge here. All right, so I'm gonna take my serrated rib, press down in, get some nice grooves going, right? get it nice and rough and um, uh, it's ready for my coil. Right, so I have my coil. I rolled more than I needed. And I can take a look and see uh, what I need, right, for this. So this is, uh, could be a little on the thick side, right? But it'll totally work. I can pinch and tear off what I don't need. And I have enough to do a second one if uh, things go a little crazy, okay? Um, so scoring the other side, running my rib, my serrated rib around. Again, don't be afraid to get this rough. And what I wanna do with these pieces here is I can either overlap um, vertically or pinch together on the side. Pinching together on the side will work well. I want to have a little bit of an overlap there because it will hold the piece together nicely. It will hold the foot together. It'll keep it secure. And with a little bit of water, I'll add water to one side. I'll add water to the other. And let that soak in just a little bit. This will create a soft surface for things to bond together. Now I'll go back over with my rib and it'll create more grooves. So for this scoring, I wanna score, slip, score again and then add water to just one more side because it can get really slippery when we place this on. Right. And then I have my coil placed on there. And this is the overlap here, right? My coils are meeting on the inside and outside and I'm gonna pinch those together. 
And I'm going to slowly get this wheel going and I'm going to pinch down and compress my coil on the bolt. All right, so take your time with this. Right? I wanna make sure I have a nice even uh, or a nice sturdy connection. Cause if I start throwing this, um, it will slide all over the place, right? And then effectively what you guys are gonna do is just throw a foot, which is uh, really kind of fun, right? So for uh, a pedestal bowl, Kind of like this we can have a little bit more of a raised foot right so depending on how thick your coil is you know it determines how thick your foot is It's a really effective way to make a foot. And I'm, all, my, all my doing is letting the clay glide between my fingers. I'm pinching on one side, then I'm compressing the top here. Okay. It's just like throwing. I can trim this off if I really wanted to. Um, but. I think that works pretty good. We'll have a nice finger groove on my foot. And we'll call it there. Okay, right? so remember, don't forget to sign, right? So I want to pass this around just so people can take a look at it. And this is a demo piece, so I don't mind if I have fing if fingerprints are on the bowl or anything like that, but it gives you an idea of like the shape of it, right? So um, yeah, let's take a look. I'll just kind of pass this around. Any questions about the Coil foot. Yeah. So third option, right? So try the trimming first, which you, you've done, right? So if you feel like you would have more success at the uh, coil foot, I was thinking about it yesterday because there were a lot of people throwing flat bottoms in one of my classes, um, and they were going to trim through. It's like, what would be a good way to add another foot on there? So um, making a small coil and, you know, attaching and then throwing, right? Um, but that will work just fine for um, one of the requirements for receiving an A grade, right? Any other questions? Cool. Well, now I want to um, show you all that handle demo. So I didn't do a handle demo in your last time today. Great. So I got my board. I got my cup, classic diner, diner shape. Right, and let's get my fresh ball of clay here. So you can make handles a number of ways. Um, traditional way is pulling between your uh, hands, right? So between your thumb and forefinger, which I'll, I'll demonstrate another time. Um, you can roll out a coil. Conveniently, I have a coil here, right? You can take a measurement um you know generally what i like doing is using the cup as its own measurement tool right so if i have a length of clay 
that is the height of the cuff, I can have something that looks uh, relatively in proportion to it, right? So you can roll a coil and attach it that way. Um, and, you know, adding some sort of flair to it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a slab one. So rolling a coil and patting down with your hand. I'm doing the worm. People know the worm, right? So rocking my hand, flattening out my uh, coil. I will look at my coil every so often. They don't want it to be too thick, right? It's not going to feel good in my hand. And then we'll we can stretch the slab a little bit too, right? You can continue pounding it, um, but learning how to stretch a slab is really important in ceramics. So. Uh, it's just picking up your slab, letting it drop on one end, then that momentum will carry over and your slab will stretch out a little bit, right? And I'm getting kind of a fun texture with the uh, wood here. So with this, I wanna cut down my bottom and I can take a little measurement on top, make a mark of where I want to cut. So I have this nice uh, rectangular tongue looking thing. And then it's gonna trim up the sides a little bit. So straight cut, this just cleans everything up. And for wit, I'll use my thumb as a measurement tool, right? Because, you know, it's always nice to have a handle that fits your thumb, right? Some people's thumbs are a little wider. Some people's thumbs are a little more narrow, right? And then one of the last things I like to do is I'll dab um, my fingers in a little bit of water and just run my thumb and fingers on the side. We'll just round things out so it's not so sharp. And I like a classic handle. So I'm gonna use my serrated rib, score the top here and then flip it, this will be the bottom. And then I'm gonna attach the handle to the mug here, right? So I'll do that about three quarters of the way up and I can take a little eyeball measurement of where I want to place this. Eyeballing things are completely okay in ceramics, right? If it doesn't look to your liking, you can always adjust. Ceramics is pretty forgiving. Clay is pretty forgiving. Um, and then adding water with a brush to one side of this. And I'll attach the scored sides together, right? So pressing in, pressing with my thumb on one side, then I'll hold my uh, handle connection in and I can uh, just lightly press down and press up. I get a nice little curve there. Right? so that's what I'm looking for. And I'll go back through, press my thumb into the outside here and support the inside with my finger and I can switch back and forth and then I need to attach this bottom and right, so what I'm going to do is take a look at my handle shape 
think about placement, I can place it up a little bit more, right? Something like that. So um, now where it's at is where I want to score it. So I'll just move my handle to the side. Add my score marks. That's why you want to score your bottom first. At least I find it helpful. Right? Add my water. And then from here, when I compress this together with my thumb, I'll press down and back and then up and up and down. So left, right, up, down. People know the old NES Contra code, right? Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Anyone? <laughs> Dating myself. Um, so there you go, right? Quick and easy handle. I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, some more handles as the semester goes on, um, but everyone likes a good mug. Everyone likes a good handle. Um, handles aren't required for the assignment, but if you make something that's like, that's going to be a really nice mug, um, you can make yourself a handle, right? Um, so I'm going to pass this around for people to look at, right? Again, you know, you can take a look at the handle. If you want to touch it with your uh, fingers, you can just to feel how soft it is. It's a demo. I'm not worried about it. Um, did you do your handle before or after the trip? Oh, do your handle after you trim. Okay. I yep. as much, but I just wanted to. Yep. I forgot a step in there, right? It says if you put your handle on before you trim, what do you think will happen? Well, they probably would mess it up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like got an arm hanging out, and it's just eventually it's going to bounce into your wrist and break. So I've had that happen to me. So I will trim this. Um, with the handle on and I just, yeah. You know, so if you put your handle on first, just be careful of you know, where it is. Um, any questions about handles? Cool. So I think that was relatively short and sweet. Um, that's everything on my list. Okay, so 